So how do I go about doing cloth simulations that don't look like garbage? It doesn't really take a lot. The only difference between both of these renders that you see on your screen right now is that one of them has an additional subdivision multiplier. Well, I mean, that's pretty much the entire point of cloth simulations. You want it to be as close to real cloth as possible. And to do that, you have to have as many subdivisions as possible. But at the same time, you need to keep it to a number that your computer can actually handle. So let's just come over here on the layout page for like an actual practical example. I have to like plane setup. I've subdivided them already. I also have the cloth multiplier and I have the further subdivision multiplier to make it look better. Um, we're going to go through it again. Actually, let's just remove both of these. Yeah, I'm going to remove both of these to make the actual simulation better. Um, so yeah, let's drop them. And as you can see, you can clearly tell the difference between both of them. I do have them on like opposite sides of what they should be because <laughs> over here you can see like the better one is on the right side but over here I have it on the left. Anyway, yeah, I, I can't be bothered to switch them, okay? Just don't judge me. Um, don't judge me, yeah, okay. So click on this, control two. I always do like a subdivision of two because it just, it's good enough for my taste. I'm gonna also give them materials. I have a nice cloth material set up. It's nothing really, it's just a wave texture, the basic wave texture. If you do wanna look at what it actually is, um, here it is, it's, it's this PSTF, like principled PSTF. And then for the displacement, I have a bump and I have a wave texture just feeding into the bump. It's really nothing really, it's nothing good. Anyway, so what's the whole point of having a better looking cloth? Well, here's the thing. Everyone wears clothes. We all know what it looks like. We have curtains at, in our homes. We have other like, you know, sheets. We also know how plastic works. They're basically all like the same physics. Everyone is familiar with what a piece of cloth falling on a cube should look like. It does not look like this because it's just, it just doesn't. This should be bending. Like the brain does not accept. While this one, yeah, it's more realistic. It's a sheet. Uh, I don't mean to say like this will never happen. There are some materials that will act like this, and there are certainly some some situations where you will want a material to act like this. But for most basic purposes, you want a cloth to be as cloth-like as possible. And when it comes to like its stiffness and other things, you want to control it from this area, like stiffness, dampening. Like you want to control the actual physical properties from over here instead of depending on something like this. Because at the end of the day, this is going to be not as realistic as this one. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want to know like what, what I use the cloth uh, simulation for, um, I do have a video on bed sheets where I use the cloth simulation to make bed sheets and then I use it to make like the, I guess, covers slash duvet on top. And I also use it to make like the pillow cover because I couldn't be bothered to make like an actual pillow so what I did was just make a cube and drop the pillow on top of it I'll see if I can post the you know image of that at the end of this video so yeah I guess that's it okay so I played around a little bit with the colors well not really a little bit I, all I did was just make it a bit more transparent change the color so I guess you can use this if your table is like basically it has like a plastic sheet on top because this is behaving really similar to actual plastic while this other one over here like the pink one this one it's behaving similar to like an actual cloth so for if you if you're simulating like plastic you don't need to subdivide it as much oh yeah this one uh this is the bed sheet that i made basically uh the one at the bottom like this white one is also a simulated cloth uh, I know it doesn't really look like it because it's basically covered by this slightly thick cloth and the one on the pillows. I guess the pillow one is what I'm like most proud of because I was feeling way too lazy to make this. So all I did was just make a cylinder, make squish it a little bit, and just drop a blanket on top. That's that's all. That's all this is. 
this has zero effort into it. I even like reuse the material. Okay, so the final advice I'm gonna give you, well, it's not really advice, it's like a basic workflow, like, thing that everyone does. Uh, say I'm happy with this, like, final look of this cloth. Well, I can't really move it around, because as soon as I do that, it just, you know, goes back to, like, a simulation thing. So what people do, well, what everyone is supposed to do is, once you're happy with its look, you come over here to the modifier, and you apply the cloth modifier. And now, you can, like, move it wherever you want. It's basically, the mesh has been modified to have this look permanently now. Alright, so, yeah, that's all good and everything, but that's not it. Um, the final thing that you should be doing with your cloth is, after you have, like, subdivided it, after applying the cloth um, modifier, you need to add a solidify modifier to it. Um, this is primarily to give it, like, some thickness, because, honestly, without it, it just doesn't feel like it has the weight, you know? Um, it makes like your materials look good as well, if you have subsurface scattering, if it has like a volumetric uh, texture as well, it will look a lot better if it has a, an actual width. Um, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and goodbye.